For more great content, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell. Powder, look at me. What did I tell you? That I'm ready. That's right. So? Nobody wins in war, Vi. I wish I could say it gets easier, kiddo. But I'd be lying. What I can say is, she still needs you. They all do. Powder. What makes you different makes you strong. Always remember that, okay? Are we still sisters? Nothing is ever going to change that. Arcane is taking over the world. Riot Games' debut animated League of Legends series has become a hit with both League fans and general audiences. It's maintained a 100% average on Rotten Tomatoes and received near-perfect scores from most online reviewers. I can't believe I'm saying that, but I think Arcane is the best animated series I've ever seen. The show has been heralded as a masterpiece and the future of animation and CG, but this didn't happen overnight. Everything that you see is a labor of love. Every background, every prop, and every character, someone spends all their time like really focusing on making it the best thing it could possibly be. Arcane is the end result of more than a decade of Riot Games animations. So how did a company that originally made a single game that looked like this? Produce arguably the best video game screen adaptation of all time. This is the rise of Arcane. It all began in 2009 when Riot Games released its first trailer. The pre-beta footage featured only a handful of the characters from the now expansive 157 champion roster. Some have vision. Some have grace. And some have strength. The cinematic is rudimentary, even by 2009 standards, but it gave fans the first look at what would ultimately become one of the world's most popular games. It took well over a year for the next fully animated cinematic to be released, but in that time, Riot had improved its product substantially. Far more emphasis was put on dynamic action, or what each of the champions were capable of in-game. This level of detail would be mirrored in the various small animated projects that followed, as well as the 2012 animated trailer for the Dominion game mode. In the summer of 2013, Riot once again took a giant leap forward with the creation of A Twist of Fate, a cinematic that not only progressed Riot's animated visuals, but their storytelling as well. While previous animations had been strongly tied to game mechanics like capturing points or taking towers, A Twist of Fate maintained the spirit of the gameplay while minimizing the more unrealistic elements. We saw the cut of the Garen scene, it didn't have the spin. Garen is not Garen if there's no spin, so how can we make a spin? It's not like a literal interpretation. And then Brad got up and he did his thing. And I, I stood up and I was like, it could look like this. And I whipped around, kicked the chair into the wall, kicked his wall. And the whole time he's just screaming, yes, yes, yes. And that was it. That was like the birth of it. And so I sat down and I started gesture drawing over the actual animation itself. 
there was a lot of back and forth on getting that to look really authentic to Garen, but in a new way. But that was only the beginning. In October of that year, fans were treated to consecutive videos that would set the modern standard for Riot animation. The first was a promotional video for the 2013 League of Legends World Championship. This featured various players in 2D animation, utilizing the weapons and fighting styles of the champions they were known for. The second was a CG music video giving the world their first glimpse of what would become a fan favorite champion, Jinx. This video was produced by Riot in partnership with Paris-based animation production studio Fortiche Productions. This collaboration brought the world of Runeterra to life like never before, with more cinematic camera work and a dynamic blend of 2D and 3D animation. And fans just couldn't get enough. When Get Jinx came out, I remember that a lot of people were like, what the hell is this? Where did this come from? Who did the animation? Did Riot do this music? Like, this is actually like a really catchy music video. Like, we know it, we, everyone knew it was you know, an advertising, a marketing scheme to get you to buy skins and to buy this character and to invest your money into League of Legends. But I really think people were, were kind of caught off guard and said, can, can we get more of this? Like, can, can, can we get more? Uh, we want more of this. With this demand, Riot was faced with a problem. Originally, the story revolved around summoners who acted as proxies for the players. They would summon champions to battle in the fields of justice to sort out disputes between nations. But this premise ultimately limited the focus to the faceless summoners rather than the far more interesting champions. So in 2014, with the expanding roster of champions and fans taking much more interest in their conflicts, Riot completely revamped the lore. Gone were the summoners, gone were the fields of justice, and gone was the institute of war. League of Legends had essentially retconned itself out of its own lore. It really felt like the end of 2014 was a, a shifting point for the company. And I think if you probably look back at it, those were probably the first steps where you would see like, this is what Riot's gonna become. They're not gonna become the singular entity. They wanna be an empire. They don't wanna just be kind of, you know, this one trick pony. And I think 2014 was kind of them knowing that for them to really fulfill the dreams they had, you know, the dreams of a Netflix series, the dreams of, you know, all of these different kinds of mediums that they can get into. I think 2014, the reset was them saying, we need to have a, a more fleshed out lore, more fleshed out characters. And I think it was, really was a pivoting point in the company's future. But for everything it may have lost, League of Legends gained so much more. Spiced up bio pages, new splash art for many of their older champions, and soon, more lore-heavy animations. Every child in Valoran has heard the tale before About the cursed mummy boy who felt his heart no more So sad and lorn, the helpless lad of who was his name He ventured out to find a friend to learn about his bane Fresh off Riot's announcement to shake up the lore, it released a pair of videos focused on the desert-based Shirima region, which coincided with an in-game event and a new character release. A month later, the Shadow Isles got the same treatment. This time is known as the Harrowing. During the Harrowing, the spirits of the Shadow Isles go forth within the Black Mist. When the 2014 League of Legends World Championship came around, Riot partnered once again with Fortiche Studios, as well as the Las Vegas-based rock group Imagine Dragons. Together, they created a music video unlike anything Riot had ever produced before.
In the years that followed, Riot would continue to push the envelope with its cinematics, using several art styles, genres of music, and game integrations to tell the story of League's world, as well as the offshoot alternate realities like Star Guardian, Project, and KDA settings. The videos Riot made with Fortiche Productions were heralded as the best and most influential in their catalog. So when it came time for Riot to officially cross mediums and enter the realm of film, who better to team up with than Fortiche? In 2019, on Riot's 10th anniversary of its debut into music videos, the big announcement came. Led by co-creators Alex Yi and Christian Linka, Arcane was Riot's first opportunity to tell a full-length story within the new lore. Arcane is set in Piltover and Zon, and will explore the lives of the many champions who live there, including Jinx and Vi, who, as many of you have guessed, are in fact sisters. Jinx and Vi are two characters that Alex and I actually worked on during their creation some 10 years ago, and even back then we could tell that they're really special. They've always been fan favorites, and when we were approaching this idea and had to think about which characters we'd really want to sink our teeth into, it was pretty obvious to us. These two sisters have this very troubled relationship and couldn't be more different from each other. From the jump, Linka and Yi wanted to lean into what fans loved about previous Riot animations, the dynamic visuals that synchronized with incredible music. We had a pretty crazy ambition, you know, we said to ourselves, what if we had like a mini music video in every episode? Songs by Imagine Dragons, Sting, and other artists can be heard throughout Arcane, producing a high-end soundtrack that acts as the needle upon which the show spins. But music and visuals alone wouldn't be enough to sell the show. To complete the package, Arcane needed a killer script and a talented voice cast to back it up. Riot is really big on doing, a lot of times for voiceover, they don't do callbacks, um, but it, uh, for as precious of a project as Arcane was to Riot, it makes sense to me that they would do a callback for, for even a character like, you know, Elora, who isn't important, but also, you know, not considered a, um, a main character. And I really loved that, like the, the, every characterization was so important to them, which is why I was so honored. Well, I know that having worked on League, you know, because they, they, they make these characters that have to exist and stand out in a universe full of incredible characters. I mean, I've, I've, had, I've been very lucky to have an association with Riot for many years because I played Brahm in League of Legends. So as part of that world, I had no idea that this is what you could do with it. Uh, and I also was wondering, whether there would be a weird big Norwegian guy in, a, in an animated series. So Vanda came along and it just fit really, really well. Guy with a heart, Brom's the guy with the heart. Um, and uh, and the idea yeah. of this, running this crew of kids in this sort of underworld, immediately attractive. It was just, he's like <laughs> a younger Fagin. For two years after Arcane's announcement, fans were treated to an ever improving array of animated videos. In May of 2021, Netflix announced that Arcane would arrive in the fall. And a month later, Riot released a never before seen clip along with a dev video discussing the upcoming show. We will dive deeply into the stories and relationships and struggles of all these characters and find out what their lives look like and what made them who they are today. And for those people who aren't really familiar with our game, we just want to show them why we stuck with these characters for over a decade now and why we love them so much. On November 6th, Netflix launched the first segment of Arcane. Unlike other shows that either drop an entire season all at once 
or release episodes on a weekly basis, Arcane released in batches of three episodes, or acts, and each act had its own arc and emotional climax. This structure offered the best of both worlds, allowing for discussion, theorizing, and fan engagement between act releases, while also making sure there was never a dud week. And this was enough to ensure Arcane skyrocketed to the top of the Netflix charts. Arcane's not a popcorn show. It's actually just a legitimately amazing scientific, you know, sci-fi, fantasy, political drama. Like, it doesn't matter what kind of context you're putting Arcane into, it's an amazing series from the animation to the writing to the music to everything put into it. You could see how much money and heart and soul was put into that series. And I think them doing it week by week by week, those three weeks, they captured the attention of the entire world during those three weeks where it didn't overstay its welcome, where it, you know, it lost the hype over time. And I think it could have if it was you know an episode a week. I think them taking those three weeks and kind of just like be like, this is our time. The word of mouth grew by act. And then by the third act, you know, they're hosting events across the world and it's breaking records. And uh, I think Riot from start to finish, this was not a home run, this is a grand slam. Arcane held the throne as the most watched show on the platform throughout November. As the release of Act 3 approached, it was all over social media. It was advertised on buildings in Dubai. There was fan art, there was cosplay, and even an immersive live experience in Los Angeles, California. Arcane had taken over. As soon as the finale dropped on November 20th, every fan, critic, YouTube reactor, and reviewer out there had something to say. But they were all saying the same thing. Arcane was a masterpiece. I can't believe I'm saying that, but I think Arcane is the best animated series I've ever seen. I actually think Arcane is, is the best series, animated series I've ever seen. It is easily, without doubt, question, or debate, it is the single best video game adaptation in some way, shape, or form that I have ever seen, be it a uh, movie or TV show or whatever, uh, just that simple. I mean, there's no debate about that. It, it's simple. It's the best video game adaptation ever. Then, on the very same day the finale released, Riot surprised fans with a season two promo. No one else needs to get hurt. I'm glad it's you. to be Riot CEO Nicola Laurent took to Twitter to confirm that there would indeed be more Arcane in the future, but it will be over a year until fans can get their hands on it once again. After 12 years of improvement, innovation, and experimentation, Riot found the formula for making the perfect animated product. But as groundbreaking as it is, Arcane still only featured a handful of League's massive cast of characters. With Arcane's unbridled success, fans will surely have a lot more of Runeterra to explore in the years to come. <laughs>